for whatever reason you guys are traveling together, we haven't discussed that, more or less you're led to a small hovel of the town, maybe like 30 to 50 people tops, just on the outskirts of the arcane gate that encloses the center of Libria. So it's rainy, it's pouring, it's nasty out. Coming to the town, what are your guys' reasons for being here? My book told me to be here. <laughs> There's people to help. <laughs> Is there anything notable about the town of Libria? That's not the name of the town, that's the name of the, uh, it's not even proper... A geographic nation. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's, um... Territory? Yes, the Librian territory. There is no kingdom, there is no real governing body. The entire region is partly ruled or set up by the Circle of Nine, but the general day-to-day -day law and governance is held up by the powerful Merchants Guild and Guild Lords. Um, what is the, uh, town called? Village Town. Ah, yes, of course. It's more or less just an outskirt village. It's essentially just a farming village. They're still relatively close to some major places of Libria, but again, nothing really of note that I felt necessary really to put in. Including a name. Didn't bother with that. <laughs> Not going to lie to you guys. It won't be confused with town village, though. <laughs> Herdic is in town because uh, he just got finished like a job in a nearby area, and he's just looking for some respite and maybe to dock up on some common wares. Yeah, I did mention, and like with you guys' travels, for whatever reasons you traveled to this small village, um, you did hear the rumors of like people gone missing. My guy, he's a rock gnome. He's, uh, you know, about three and a half feet tall. Kind of covered up in his wizard cloak, which is kind of like a darkish gray, uh, along with like a dark gray wizard hat that has essentially like black outlining on it that has like some runes and stuff on his hat. Uh, but he also has like a collar that like covers up like half his face. The only thing you really see is like his skin, which is almost like a grayish skin tone with like sharp emerald eyes shining behind it. Uh, you can also see that his hair is kind of like flowing down from his hat and his hair is silver. He's pretty quiet, but he's here because he works for the Circle of Nine, particularly the Arch War Mage in the Circle of Nine. And he's been uh, tasked to figure out what's going on in this town. So Kedrick and Montgomery, you do in like the rain and the muck, see this gnomish figure standing in front of what appears to be probably the more notable buildings within this settlement, uh, which is the Lord Governor's housing. Yeah, Kurdic is pretty smart, but charisma is his lowest attribute, so he's not always up for socializing and meeting new faces and stuff. So he just kind of wanders in. You said it's raining and muddy or just muddy. It is raining, and therefore the streets of dirt is muddy. Yeah, so Kurdic will be walking through town, and he'll notice the gnome, and maybe they even, like, make eye contact, or, like, beneath his bloked face. So you do essentially walk up to the door and, like, kind of, like, nod at him? This is, like, an inn, or, like, a tavern, or what? Probably the most notable building, and it is the manor and state house of the Lord Governor. Lord Governors are essentially pointed figureheads of any settlement, and then a larger settlement, especially one with a lot of merchantile possibilities or, you know, ties, is going to have a kind of like a Lord Merchant as well. And the Circle of Nine will typically, in some of the larger settlements, have some kind of means of magically protecting said settlement, but also like a wizard there, like as a proxy. All right. So I would be going into this building basically to, um, I guess, search for wares or get some information on why people are missing. Yeah, that sounds like an excellent thing. I'm just going to kind of like cock my head a little bit and look at him. We don't get a lot of your kind in these parts. And like my voice is like definitely like deeper than you'd expect a small gnome to sound like. Verdict, takes in what you said for a minute, thinking of how to respond. And, and while you're thinking, I basically appear out of nowhere behind you. It's like, hello there. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> Salutations. <laughs> he kind of takes a fighting stance and it almost looks like his hand is like wrapped like it's around a sword, but there's not, he's not holding anything. Yeah, meanwhile, Mangaru was just like beaming smile. Again, I'm charisma, so I have a plus five on this shit. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just somebody like you want to just get along with. I heard there's uh, happenings around here and that I might be able to be of service. Would either of you know uh, anything about this? Gloaming does take a minute to like kind of get back to like his very serious, kind of like stands back up. It's like, all right, I didn't think anything other than a bugbear was going to freak me out, but I'm a bit more perturbed by you, I think. Ah, eh, don't worry about it. Verdict quickly turns his attention from this, like, ominous gnome over to... What is your race? Oh, he's just a human. Looks over at Montgomery and says, what he said. Well, <laughs> hope neither of you will get in the way of my uh, investigation. I'm here to figure out what's going on with all these missing people. And you seem like the type to get in the way. Get in the way or help out? Mm, no, definitely get in the way. Ah, that sounds like helping out to me. Let's go open up this door and say hello. 
<laughs> I'm on official business. I'll I'll knock. And I'm going to go up and knock on the door. Herdick stands silently but stoically behind the rock gnome. Um, so an answer <laughs> comes to the door. It is a relatively small elvish woman, half elvish by the nature, with long blonde hair tied up neatly in the back. He's wearing some glasses and just wearing, like, pretty common with a little cloak over her. He's like, yes, may I help you? I'm going to take out some papers from my cloak and uh, hand it over. He's like, I'm here on behalf of the Circle of Nine. I'm here to see the Lord Governor. I'm going to lean over the rock gnome because I'm pretty tall. I mean, I'm a bugbear. And I'm just going to go, we're with him. I do not know these people. <laughs> I'm sure you do. We, we know each other's names now. Well, it seems everything is official here. Yeah, please, please come in. Uh, you walk in, you do see, essentially it's set up, there's a little nook to the right where there's some seating and everything. You find like a desk a little bit to her left and going forward. Just to the right of that is a hallway going down. And then you can see to your left there, there is a stairway leading up. Lord Governor is uh, currently in her office. She's just straight ahead in the hallway. Oh, thank you kindly, miss. Before uh, we go... Have you heard anything about the tales of people going missing in the town? We had some strange occurrences within the last uh, month or two. I'm going to look at the two people next to me like, yes, yeah, strange occurrences. It seems to be happening a lot in this town. Verdict nods and agrees. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it all began when um, the local tavern owner, the Black Thorn, they went missing first and no one's ever seen him since. Wait, 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 wait. Is the tavern called the Black Thorn or is that what the owner's name is? It was a nickname. It was a tiefling. Very black horns that looked as though thorns from his very red skin like a rose. Mm, seems pretty racist. That's just how they're born. Herdick has his hands stroking his chin as he's like listening to this. Mm, yes, yes. I'm going to let it slide this time, but that would be a violation. You're talking to me? No, no, no. The, the racist woman. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, well, no, that's just that's how, you know, how nicknames started. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible racist nicknames. Old Blackie. <laughs> <laughs> and then recently, um, the blacksmith has gone missing as well. They said there was the last scene at the tavern, so we didn't, but we're not entirely sure what's happening. And what do you call him? Is just Smithy? Uh, Marcus. No. Black. Smith. It's a job. <laughs> oh, blacksmith does get a racist name. Got it. Well, th thank you for your information. Yes, thank you for your information. Uh, yes, I wish you were a little less snippy with me, but that's fine. I have very low charisma. I'm sorry. Understandable. We're just the driest fucks, and then we have this charismatic fool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so my investigator background allows me to kind of like get information and stuff through a combination of fast talking, determination, and official looking documentation. The documents are fake. <laughs> you can gain access to a place or an individual related to a crime you're investigating. Those who aren't involved in the investigation avoid impeding you or pass along your requests. Additionally, local law enforcement, I have firm opinions about you, viewing you as either a nuisance or one of their own. <laughs> nuisance. Nuisance. <laughs> well, I don't think I hit it off with uh, what's your face. Anyway, to the Lord Governor. <laughs> right, so you walk down the hallway, there's a couple of like rooms, there's like some documentation here and there, like a couple of desks, and you get to this very large desk at the end. Behind the desk is a sizable fireplace, and you just see a, a stocky looking woman like sitting at the table going through some paperwork. Uh, Lord Governor? Yeah, yes, who, who is it? I'm uh, Gloaming from uh, the Circle of Nine, and I hand some more official, some more official paperwork. I raise my hand. Verdict. I'm with him. He's not. She uh, stands up, and I'm assuming you're still quite a distance away. She's still looking at the paperwork. She quickly shakes her hand, pauses for a second, looks at it, looks at you, just shaking, and then going back to the paperwork. It's like, uh, yes, yes, this all seems in order. Yes. Yeah, it's about time somebody came here to do something about our problem. Well, I have very small legs. It takes me a long time to walk distances. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's like this is like a dwarven woman. That's no excuse, lad. It's my excuse. Are these your compatriots? These are strays off the street. <laughs> I just throw like a big steaming smile. We've been deputized. They have not. No, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I just say again, we're with him. Oh, no matter. The... Please have a seat and I'll go over the details with you. I prefer to stand. Uh, Curtis sits. Yes, yeah, so, so, so does Montgomery. We're now like eye level with the both of them now. We're eye level, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I don't stay. <laughs> now, in the past two months, we've had some notable losses to our village. This is a small village, so when somebody goes missing, it's very noticeable. Well, particularly when you name them Blackie. What? Blackthorn. Blackthorn, not Blackie. No, Gary. Oh, he does actually have a name. <laughs> yeah, everything has a name. 
Gary went missing about two months ago. No one saw a hide of hair of him since. No recollection of when last saw just closing up at his tavern. Since then, we've had six people gone missing, with strange tales of preachers roaming about. The seventh victim to go missing was none other than Marcus, our town blacksmith. And as you know, you know blacksmithing is very important, and so these have been hard hits, being that the tavern owner and the blacksmith have gone. What about Blackfoot? The Blackfoot. Uh, Gary. Gary? Gary. Gary. What about Gary? Did he have any uh, enemies? Friends. Or friends, in that case, yeah. Grandparents. Uh, generally, he was the tavern owner. He knew practically everyone in town. Not anymore. Not long after, it was taken over by a young man named Andrew. Mm, sounds like a motive. Who is currently running the tavern as we speak. Oh, the other surprise, not surprising thing is that Marcus was last seen going to the tavern. Hmm. Al. How was his relationship with his grandparents, <laughs> Gary? <laughs> well, he was a tiefling. I'm pretty sure he was put up for adoption. Hmm. Sounds like a motive. Don't listen to him. He has no idea what's going on with this investigation. <laughs> Why is he here? Muscle. Uh, I'm with him, actually. Well, Libria is a free state. You can kind of do what you want. I have nothing. So far, he hasn't done anything unlawful. Is he supposed to be here? This could be breaking and entering. It didn't break anything. No, we knocked. Did he knock? Well, I knocked, and then they followed, and they followed me. I'm with him. We're helping. <laughs> I wasn't refused entrance. Well, if you care to help, I would be greatly appreciative if you could find out whoever is behind these kidnappings. I mean, Gary. Gurry. Gurry. Mm, yes. Well, Kurdick and her are going back and forth. Can I like, kind of take a look at what's going on on her desk? Do I notice anything of interest? No, it just looks like essentially like paperwork and like um, taxes being collected and things of that nature. Nothing of note? Yep, nope, nothing suspicious. Was Gurry behind on his taxes? <laughs> he was actually a year in advance. Sounds like a motive. Well, I think we should begin our journey out over the tavern. We should probably talk to this Andrew fella. Yes. Yeah. Should we rough him up? No. No. <laughs> no. All right, you talk to Andrew. I'm going to go find his grandparents. <laughs> uh, this is why I work alone. <laughs> no, no, this, this, this will be great. It will be hilarious. <laughs> uh, Lady Governor, and he'll kind of like do like a bow. Evening, gentlemen. Go over the tavern. Yeah, uh, so we didn't get the actual name. What's the tavern name? Uh, Blackthorn Tavern. Oh, oh that was his name right original. Yeah. <laughs> so it was the name of the tavern. <laughs> it was named after him. Or was it the other way around? It's Blackthorn, and then people just called him that. Is it a motive? <laughs> <laughs> Who moved this chair? There's a motive here. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys go back out and, you know, the rain is coming down fairly hard. The roads are just all muck. And you make your way down to the Blackthorn Tavern. Uh, it's not really a remarkable building. The only notable thing is that there is a sign hanging out that just shows a picture of like a rose with a very black stem and black thorns coming out. Looks like a motive. Do we notice anything, like any particular motives as we're walking through the town? <laughs> the uh, Lord Governor said that some strange creatures have been seen. Nothing that you've noticed at the time. Again, this is some rather nasty weather. You would think even something like strange or odd would probably be seeking shelter. And yet here we are, the oddest of the things out here, just in the middle of the storm. <laughs> <laughs> oddest of the bunch. Before we go in, I'm going to like look at these uh, two strange people. All right. Gurdick, Montgomery, if you actually want to be of use and of help, you got to take this seriously. This is an investigation. All right? Yeah, sure thing, man. That's why I'm here. We're doing this by the book. My book. Oh. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Fine. My book's pretty great, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Look, if things go well, I'll put in a good word for you with the Circle of Nine. Yeah, perfect. All the access. I don't know how much you value that or if it's even worth anything, but I will promise it. <laughs> hey, having a in my place is a good thing, man. Now, look at both of them. Serious. I'm going to walk into the bar. As you walk into the bar, you can see in the far north side of the bar, there's a fireplace. To the west side, there's a large bar, practically all the way down on that side. Um, you would notice walking in, there is a, you know, if they're a patron, there is someone right there to your right by the door. Kind of like a larger feller. You're probably thinking like, you know, in case anything happens. To your left, you do see some a table and a stairway going up, and there is a man playing darts. Where's Andrew? You do see a barkeep behind the bar tending to a patron 
sitting at the bar. As you walk in, you do, like, everyone within the bar does notice you as you guys are walking in. It's rather strange to get, being such a small town, they kind of know who comes in and out. Yeah, so Gloaming goes in first. He, he gives the speech and he goes, okay, serious. He goes in. Um, I follow in suit right behind. Deadpan face. It, like, scout the room. I walk straight across the bar to, towards the barkeep. I extend my long arm across and grab the barkeep by the throat, yelling, what have you done with Gary? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I get your paws off me. Where's Gary? Critic, no. Down, Critic, down. I said by the book. Not her. Not her. Uh, and the guy, like, from the, like, comes up and he's walking towards you with his arms crossed. Now, Critic, while well, we don't lie in trouble, put down the nice barkeep before you get us kicked out. I thought you said we wanted answers. We, we do. We're doing it by the book. You're just being an insane person right now. I can barely read. <laughs> That's why you let us do it first. Um, you do see, like, the other patrons kind of, like, stand up, looking like they're about to jump in. I look at the numbers and I slowly release my grip from the barkeep and I go, what have you done with Gary? <laughs> I don't know what is Gary. Man, I'm getting them out of here. Can I pull out some more official looking documents? Well, hey, hey, I'm, I'm with the Circle of Nine. I don't care who you're with. You don't come in here and threaten me in my own business. Better get these guys out of here. Are you threatening to kick someone out who's a member of the Order of Nine? I'm here on strict business from the Archmage of War himself. I, why would I believe that? I have documentation. <laughs> I can't read. Look, look at the symbol. That's all you need to see. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, I apologize for my friend. No, no, that's the wrong word. Acquaintance. What can I help you with? He does quickly go back. You see he grabs three glasses. And you see he's pouring some drinks down. And he puts a drink in front of each of you. What, lie. what can I help you with then? Uh, Nader does go back and sit on his stool. I'm investigating the uh, missing people. Are you missing? <laughs> Are you uh, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, that's me. I apologize for my friend here. Uh, I keep saying that word, and that's not that's not correct. <laughs> no apologies. I I always think you know little misunderstandings are best settled with a drink. I don't drink on the job. Meanwhile, I'm I'm halfway done with mine. <laughs> Heard it gives the drink a smell test. Uh, give me a perception check. A perception check. Does he get advantage if he's sniffing it? I don't know, does he? I don't know. Do I? Uh, no, I think you just have dark vision. I didn't know if they had, like, uh... Smell of beer. I mean, <laughs> I can see. <laughs> I can see the hops. No, but some, pe some people get it. Some people get, it, like, advantage on perception checks for based on, like, smell or hearing. That's true, because of their, like, uh, race or whatever. Yeah, dark vision, long rimmed, powerful builds. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That is a 10. That smells like beer. Uh, Montgomery, give me a constitution check. All right. Uh, check or save? Uh, save. So that's an eight. All right, um, you're falling asleep. <laughs> I, I knew it. It's like, guys, shit's strong, guys. You should do it. Um, this is also the worst tasting beer you've ever had. Uh, you get used to it. It's an acquired taste. Do I notice him falling asleep? I notice that the beer smells like beer. It doesn't seem off. But do I notice him falling asleep after drinking it? I would say, yeah, he's literally falling asleep on the stool. I kind of smack him in the back of the head and say, all right, wake up. That's why I don't drink it on the job. He's up. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, oh. It's like, oh, hey, man. Barkeep, there's some potent stuff you got here. No, no, it goes down real easy the second time. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm nearly done with it. So, yeah, well, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, Montgomery, give me another check. Uh-oh. For the Constitution? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. All right, I, I'm much better. 14. All right, you don't feel as woozy, but you're all right. <laughs> so, uh, Andrew, Blackthorn. Yeah, what about him? Well, uh, he was last seen closing up the bar. Did you have any uh, relationship with him? Oh, no, no. You know, we were close friends. And, you know, once he uh, had been gone maybe uh, two weeks or so, I, I took over the bit, you know, make sure he had something to come home to. Um, You see him kind of like his eyes are darty. Uh, where are they darting to? Looking back and forth throughout the room. When he says something to come home to, Kurdick kind of like gasps a little under his breath and goes, were you his secret lover? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Kurdick. He said his name. Kurdick, pleased to meet you. Give me a uh, perception checks. Mm, that's a nine. Uh, that's also a nine. <laughs> oh, that's an 18. Montgomery, like as you're like kind of like stumbling, like you felt like you could have just fallen asleep. You kind of like powered through. You're kind of like lazily looking to your right across the bar and you see uh, Nader has gotten up and he's like blocking the door. And you can also kind of see, like, in the back corner, the guy who's playing darts is kind of, like, moving forward, 
like towards you guys' direction. It's like, uh, hey, uh, compatriots, compadres, uh, how's it going? What's up? <laughs> As he starts saying this, I'm like, hmm, you know what? Actually, I think I, I could use a drink. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself and toss the drink at Andrew. <laughs> um, give me a spell check. Oh, for uh, Mage Armor? Mm -hmm. Uh, it is a first level spell. So that's just my spell attack, right? It would be your proficiency bonus plus your spell modifier. All right, yeah, I, I cast Mage Armor. All right. So you splash it in his face, and I need you guys to roll initiative. Ooh, 19. I got a 14. I have a 9. Man, a lot of 9s tonight. I know. So once that happens, Andrew quickly looks at you, and you, you could maybe it was like the beer or something. Like it, it looks like he has this third eye appearing in the middle of his skull. Does the alcohol burn it? <laughs> Probably. In uh, Montgomery, looking at the guy who was playing darts and Natter, they too have this third eye appearing on their foreheads. It's like, man, the only time that happens to me is when I'm on some serious <laughs> rooms. <laughs> Something a little heavier than this beer. <laughs> Top of the round is going to be the guy with the darts. You can see, like, not just his eye, but, like, it looks like his skin is turning, like, slick and mucusy. And he is going to make an attack at Mount... We'll do uh, Mount Gumry. Oh, this is going to suck. It's going to be a 15 to hit. Yeah, that hits. He's going to send one of these darts flying at you. That's going to be four points of piercing damage. Ow. And you see he's readying another dart, getting ready to toss another one. Up next is Gloaming. Okay, I'm going to attempt to cast Shadow Blade. Right, is that a first level spell? Uh, it's a second level spell, so the DC is going to be 12. DC is going to be 12, yep. Uh, and it is a bonus action. Alrighty. That is a 15. All right, so you cast it successfully. Uh, what does it do? You guys just watch as, like, the shadows from, like, the floor. Before, you had seen him, like, take, like, a fighting position as if he was holding a sword, but there was no sword there. And you watch as he takes his fighting position again, and the shadows just kind of, like, form into his hand a blade of shadow. Mm. I don't recommend fighting us. And I'm going to cast Ray of Frost as my action at the guy who tossed the dart. Make a spell? Well, no, that's a cantrip. Uh, it is a cantrip. All right, the spell doesn't just go off, but you do still have to roll to hit. That's going to be a 15. All right, 15 hits. Roll for damage. Oh, that's uh, pretty good. He's going to take uh, 8 damage, and his speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. All right, so you blast this bolt of cold towards him, and you just watch as it like, Damn right. hits him, and he just collapses. He is down. I'm going to kind of point my sword over at Andrew, like, all right, is this really how you want to do it? And I mean, I'm, I'm down on the ground pointing the sword, like, up at him. Honestly, not really, but you're expected. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are you doing anything else, Gloaming? I know that was my action and my bonus action. Am I like close to anyone or do they have to come to me? Andrew is behind the bar. All right. So you have to get across the bar. Natter. So like where the bar to the south of you, he, he's not too far. He can probably get to you. And you do notice in the northeast corner by the fireplace, there's a sofa and there is a patron there. And you can see like they do have that eye. They've got the eye of Thundera as well. <laughs> Maybe. Might be lightning base. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say anyone with a third eye, not good. But yeah, that's going to be my turn. <laughs> third eye must die. Up next is Monty. Uh, yeah, so the bouncer, he's going to get an Eldritch Blast to the face. Blast him away. So does uh, 13 hit? 13 does not hit. Yeah. Uh, you kind of watch as it hits his form a little bit. And like his body like shakes with it. Like it, like it wasn't something solid that it had hit. Or chipped off of gross wobbly and i'm going to use a bonus action and use healing light on myself so i'm going to roll a 1d6 all right i'm on back to full health hey all right anything else monty oh uh, that'll be all up next then is kedrick andrew is still just behind the bar he is behind the bar i'm gonna attempt to hop the bar and grapple him all right I want to put him in a headlock as a hostage and point my laser rifle at everyone in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody move. This is a stick up. <laughs> All right. So give me an athletics check. That's a 14. All right. He is grappled. Yay. Perdick just basically jumps over the tape, like flips over the bar. So I have basically have him in a headlock. Going back and forth between pointing my laser rifle at the people in the room and pointing it at Andrew's head. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just whispering. Where's Gary? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that going to be your turn? Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, Monty's like struggling, trying to get out, out of your grip. 
As that's happening, though, I suppose Gloaming would, might notice this. Um, nah, probably not. You probably can't see over the bar, huh? Are you standing grappled him? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm like standing behind him, using him as a shield. All right, so Gloaming, you would probably notice Andrew has his arms over uh, Kedrick's arms. And you watch as his mouth splits open and you see like these razor sharp teeth appear. But up next is going to be Andrew. So he's currently grappled. Currently grappled. Now, let me see. What does grappling do necessarily? I think it drops their speed to zero. Grapple. A grapple creature's speed is zero and it can't benefit from bonus of speed. The condition ends the grappler is incapacitated. The condition also ends if any effect is removed. A grapple creature from the reach of the grappler or grappling effects such as. Okay, so pretty much he just can't move. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so he is going to turn his head around. Like an owl? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. It's still like within human motion, but turn his head around enough to like actually see Kendrick. And you're going to watch as his eye begins to glow and a beam just shoots out of his eye. Ooh, point blank. Does he get disadvantage from a ranged attack? Ah, uh, you know what? He might. <laughs> he can't like quite turn his head all the way. He has grapple too, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll give him this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he misses completely. So you see like he's going to turn around. And he's going to try and go for a bite. Uh, that's going to have to wait till his next turn. Then after that is going to be... So Natter is going to walk up. He's going to get pretty much behind and get between Montgomery and Gloaming. And you're going to watch as he's doing like this. body forms to be almost like a, practically a liquid. And his arms form into these tentacles. I'm not a Japanese high school girl. And you're each going to get essentially a tentacle attack. Montgomery, that's going to be... It's only a 10 to hit. Ah, that does not hit. Gloaming, ah, that's only an 8 to hit. Yeah, eight will not hit with my mage armor, or even without my mage armor. So now the person that was sitting in the sofa, this woman is going to stare down. Again, you see the third eye. Her skin looks almost like scales, but third eye is going to glow and she is going to stare at Kendrick. Kendrick, I need you to make a wisdom save. A wisdom save? Yep. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh no, my wisdom is actually pretty high. Oh right, you're a monk. Yes. You're just not smart. Yes. Yeah. A lot of life experience. <laughs> but he had to learn the hard way. Like intuitive. Yeah, more intuitive. That's a uh, 17 plus my right, 17 wisdom is save. 19. Um, for a minute there, you felt your body stiffening up, but you were able to fight it off. Um, She kind of just hisses at you and then looks at Gloaming, and that'll be her turn. All right, top of the round, that's going to be Gloaming. You said that the bouncer was between me and Montgomery. Yes. Would I have advantage if I did a melee attack on him? Well, he's between in the sense of, like, you guys would be at the bar and he's standing directly behind the two of you. So, like, he's in range to be able to, like, hit you guys, but you're not flanking or anything. Can I set myself up to be flanking? By d, &D rules, yes, you could. Okay, I'm going to do that so that I can attack with my shadow sword with advantage. All right. It counts as, like, a finesse weapon, and I'm proficient with it. So it's going to be a plus four to hit, uh, and I have advantage. Uh, so that was a 23 and a five. All right, so the 23 does hit. That is going to be 2d8 psychic damage. Ooh. 10 psychic damage. You go through his body, and you feel like if this was any kind of, like, normal weapon, probably wouldn't have done any sort of damage, but because this was a magical attack, he is raving in pain from this blow. Yeah, psychic damage. He cries out this, like, monstrous, like, almost just ungodly, curdling scream as you hit him with this sword. That's what you get when you mess with the Circle of Nine. All right. Anything else, Gloaming? Uh, no, that was my action. And I'm going to stay where I'm at so that hopefully uh, Montgomery also gets advantage. All righty. So up next will be Montgomery. Do I get advantage with Elf Blast at point-blank range? I don't know. Is it just melee attacks that blanking effects? Oh, uh, no, that's a good point. You would be at disadvantage. You know what? I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on this guy. Make him make a dex save. No, he does not make it. Yep, roll the damage. All right, so that's a 1d8 radiant damage. Seven damage. All right, so you watch as the Sacred Flame hits him, like, in the same spot where, like, he, the blade had cut him, and you watch as from that wound, and again, this blood-curdling scream, he is just, like, disintegrating and melts to the floor. Yeah, and so as he, like, melts, I'm going to point my sword back over Andrew. He's like, you've only got one friend left. You're next, lizard bitch. And you see he's about <laughs> to just sink his teeth into Kurdick. No, no, he can't do that. He's not an owl. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, up next is Kurdick. He is not owl ass. Yeah, as a free action, can I ask him a question? Yeah, sure. Make it short. Where's Gary? Yeah, <laughs> I think I saw that coming. 
Yeah. He ignores you completely and he's just like about to just bite into your arm. Okay. Well, um, fourth the shot. I'm gonna take a shot at the lizard bitch with my laser. All right, go right ahead. I'm gonna also use the key point. You can use a bonus action on your turn to make a ranged attack. Oh, with a Kensei weapon, deal an extra. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I basically use my bonus action and a key point to deal extra damage. Can I decide that after if it hits or not? It would say if you can do that or not. Yeah, I usually would say that. You can use a bonus action on your turn to make ranged attacks with a Kensei weapon, deal an extra 1d4 damage of the weapon's type until the end of the current turn. No, it sounds kind of like smite rules. Which is? Oh no, smite rules would be you can decide either what or. So yeah, I would say yeah. So in that case, I'm just going to um, take a shot, and then if it hits, I'm going to use my key point to do it. All right, go right ahead. That's an 11 to hit. It just hits. So I'm going to use my key point. The initial damage is pretty high. It's 3d8 plus 3. So it's going to be 11 damage in total. All right, you watch as, like, right in the eye. He curls back and, like, falls on the sofa, and he's lying there dead. Yeah, yeah. For Gary. Big that. <laughs> oh, Gary! <laughs> I don't know how many people have seen a laser rifle before, but to some that might be a spectacle. And then I'd like to move below the bar level. Why? Like with Andrew. Um, I think that would be like dropping prone, and I'm pretty sure that's an action. Also, why? <laughs> it's like they're all dead. Okay, fine. I don't do that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I move slightly to the left. I don't think you can. I think isn't your speed? No, no. You can move half your movement speed. You can drag someone half your movement speed. Yeah, I, I do that. All right. But aggressively, you know? Yes, you do. Like, he's uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. And I'll pass my turn. That's it. All right, so that is going to be Andrew's turn. And he's going to do what I said he's going to be doing. He bites you. Probably not. Nope. That's going to be 10 to hit. That does not hit. All right. So he goes to bite you, but you've been expecting it. You kind of, like, nudge your arm out of the way. He's just like, ah, rah, 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 rah. It's a miss. That'll be top of the round with the gloaming. So how far away is the last bad guy? Other than Andrew? They're all dead. Oh, they're all dead. Oh, oh, she's dead as well? Yeah, both sides of the, the creepy eye. Okay, sorry, I completely missed that. I thought we were still... I thought Corey missed. No, no, it was... Not. Oh, no, I blew her up with my laser rifle. Nice. Only 29 shots to go. <laughs> <laughs> I should track that. I'm going to take out some rope, and while Gerdick has uh, Andrew grappled, I'm going to try tying him up. All right, give me um, an athletics... Yeah, give me um, a sleight of hand or an athletics check. While he's doing this, can I cast Guidance on him? Yeah, allow it. All right. I am going to go with the Athletic check because I'm better at it, and I will add a D4 to it. It's not great. But that is. Oh, well, the four at least. That, that's 11 in total. Yeah, you're not getting it on him. That's a real shame. He's, like, raving and, like, ugh, gnashing out. I'm going to find, like, the biggest bottle of, of, like, like the hardest alcohol and start pouring on him to see if it does anything to him because he's slimy. I also hold on. Is that both of you guys' turn then? Guidance and. Oh, oh yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Well, then it would be Kendrick's turn. Yeah, I mean he's grappled. He's clearly not cooperating. I'm just gonna ask the other two. Like, I'm gonna gesture like with finger guns. Like, pew pew. Like, should I shoot him? <laughs> My, Montgomery just he just shrugs. It's like, man, do whatever. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate. He's our only lead, but I don't think he's gonna cooperate with us. Are you gonna cooperate? The eye sees all. Oh, he's like just ranting and raving. Yeah, as, as soon as he yells that, I just put the gun to his head and just shoot him. All right, I'm gonna say like that takes him out. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna look at Kurdic and be like, that's 28. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, uh, Gloaming actually knows how those rifles work. I'm just gonna mutter like, grandparents would have been a better lead. <laughs> um, can I check behind the bar and see if there's like any like clues or anything there that might lead to uh, Blackthorn? Um, so, looking behind the bar, you do see the desecrated body of one Andrew. Um, there's not a lot of room back here, um, but, like, to the northern side of the bar, you do see there seems to be, like, some kind of uh, trap door. Um, but short of that, it's just, like, barrels of, like, whatever they've kept back here. Uh, but there's a trap door over here? Yep, there is a trap door. I'm going to, like, look at my two companions, point to my emerald green eyes, and then point to them as, like, follow me, but be quiet. Uh, Kurtik is actually a proficient in stealth, so... Yes, but can he actually use it? We'll see. All right, so I'm going to try and, like, open up the hatch as quietly as possible and, uh, head on down. 
And so you head on down and it does appear to be just a typical cellar. You do see some barrels of, you're assuming beer, to the south side of the cellar. You're coming in like on the west side. Um, and there's a bookcase. Odd place to keep books. I peruse the bookcase. I choose one and I just move it ever so slightly as if it was a, like a secret door. Uh, roll me a charisma check. Oh, I'm not great. Minus one. That's a crit fail. Minus one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a literal zero. The book you grab has a spider on it. I drop the book and thrill like a little girl. <laughs> I'm going to look at him. He's like, I thought you were proficient in stealth. I'm scared of spiders. <laughs> you take spiders. I just step on the spider. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kendrick does not like spiders. Remember the conversation we had outside the bar? Serious. This is an, it's an investigation. People's lives are in doubt. Don't you know spiders are poisonous? <laughs> Kurdic is now just like panic, like looking around the room, the, you know, everywhere looking for more spiders because he saw one, so now he just thinks they're everywhere. Can I do an investigation check on the uh, bookcase? Yeah, I was going to do the same thing. Are you proficient in investigation? I am. Same. All right, Montgomery, roll me a d20. That's a seven. All right, Gloaming, uh, just roll an investigation check, uh, no advantage. Oh, also a seven. <laughs> Like seven total? Yeah, seven total. <laughs> so you're going through and you're looking at these books and nothing seems to be happening at all. Um, Then you um turn to your left and you notice there's one candelabra that happens to be burning. I go over to the candelabra and I move it with one finger ever so slightly as if it were... A spider underneath it. <laughs> no, like I'm expecting it to be like the lever for a hidden door again. Uh, you break the candelabra. Dang. Ah. You also hear a loud clicking noise. Like a lock coming undone. Oh, well done, Kendrick. <laughs> Excellent. I was concerned that you were just completely used. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> um. So, do we notice what's opening up, or do we? Just, can I try and move the uh, bookcase as if it was like a door? You're pushing and pulling on the bookcase, and you realize that you're able to just push it westward to the far end, and you have a opening. Oh, nice. Uh, well, it looks like a long hallway with uh, candles going down, so it's pretty bright down here. Wouldn't want to have to use my garment. I approach them. You see all the spiders. I do not approach anything. <laughs> I turn invisible. Are you casting invisibility? I literally cast invisibility. Roll me a spell check. It's level two, so we had 12. That's plus my five. So that, that I got a 14. All right. I'm invisible. So you do cast invisibility. You are invisible. Right, so do you guys have a marching order? Um, I'll go first. Um, but I, as I do, my shadow blade only lasts a minute, so that's gone. It just dispersed back into the shadows, but I'm going to attempt to cast Blur. All right. Was that a second level spell? It is a second level spell. How long does that last? Oh, uh, that is also for up to a minute. So I guess I'm going to just hope that as they're walking for the next minute. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, because I'm assuming like, it's not going to take as long to walk down this hallway. All right. So roll me a spell check. So I need a 12 or better. 17. All right, you cast Blur. You guys, watch as Gloaming shifted. Like, you're having a hard time pinpointing exactly where he is, even though he was just standing still for a minute ago. Curry just starts, like, rubbing his eyes and, like, looking intently, trying to find his friends. Kendrick, Montgomery's missing, and Gloaming is, like, you can't focus on him at all. Montgomery has clearly gone invisible. This is also a spell. Don't freak out. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, like yeah, 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 Kendrick. <laughs> I lean down towards this uh, Blur, and I go, but what about the spiders? You know what? Just stay about 20 feet back and try and be as quiet as possible. As soon as something tries to attack me, come to my aid. <laughs> Meanwhile, I pat uh, Kendrick on the shoulder. It's like, don't worry, man. I'll be right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I cast Mold Earth on like the wall next to him, and I make it a smiley face. <laughs> as we're like, proceed to walk or whatever, Gerdick is overly attentive to where he's stepping because he has such long limbs. He doesn't want to step on anyone because he doesn't know really where they are. So he's like kind of tripping over his own feet, like being super careful not to step on anyone. And he's kind of nervous about the spider. I told you to be quiet. You said you knew how to stealth. I'm trying. All right, so you guys are walking down this hallway. It's not very long, maybe about 20 or so feet. And then you see another small small hallway, like 10 feet down and there's a doorway. I'm on a time clock. My blur only lasts a minute. I'm just going right up to the door and opening it. 
Right, so as you open up the door, it's a, um, like a small hallway, like one person can fit through it, no problem. Um, but to your right, there are two cells. You see in the smaller cell, there appears to be a man there. And in the larger cell, there seems to be a young girl. The minute you open the door, the man's like, oh, oh, thank God, thank God you're here. Gary, is that you? Please, you've got to let me out. You've got to let us out. Um, the small girl in the corner is just quiet. Gary? Gary? No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on the black side. Marcus, please, please, you've got to get me out of here. I can't go through that again. Uh, who, who's the young girl? It's um, Winry's daughter, uh, Gail. Have you seen Gary? Who's Gary? <laughs> We're only interested in Gary. Blackthorn. He's the one doing this. Oh, come on, that's so cliche. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's maybe the racist name. <laughs> Please, please, you've got to get me out of here. You can only call a guy a blackie, Blackthorn, <laughs> for so long until he gets really pissed off about it. <laughs> no, there was, there was nothing like that. Something, he found something. something. Something's changed him. Yeah, he found a backbone, and now he's not putting up with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he yells at you, he's like, so you're just going to let me rot? I mean, honestly, it's justified retaliation. He continues begging you to uh, let him out. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I'm just saying, you know, think for me. Uh, I do have thieves tools and proficiency with them, so I will try to pick lock. I can just use mold earth to build a small little tunnel for him to get un out underneath the bars. That's a better idea. So like, you just see the ground start moving out of the way, five foot blocks out of the time. Um, he's terrified at first, and like he backs up. As soon as the earth has been moving, he sees this and he seems like, oh, thank you. He dives and he like comes right out and he just bolts out the door. The moment I actually cast the spell, it actually gets rid of my visibility. I didn't realize that it was any spell. So, damn. He's not even freaked out that you appeared out of nowhere. Okay. I'm going to attempt to grab him and stop him from running and keep him in the room. All right, give me a athletics check. When Montgomery reappears, Curtis rolls like a little girl again. <laughs> uh, so as he's screaming, I'm trying to like take this guy like down to the ground to stop him from running away. I mean, Curtis is uh, you know, <laughs> this big burly. He, he's just really yeah, terrified. He's, of, just he's just really terrified of spider. <laughs> it's like it's me, but Montgomery. I'm not a spider. A spider would say that. That's what a spider <laughs> would want me to think. Hey, Gloaming, did you make your athletics check? I did. It was a sixteen. As he's crawling out, like you realize he's just about to bolt, you like hop on top of him, top on him, and you you got him in a grapple. I'm taking him down to the ground if I can. He's weeping. He's like, please, please, I can't do it again, please. You are a man. Act like it. Let the girl go and make sure she makes it to safety. And she's still just like in her cell, seemingly very quiet. I'm gonna start building a tunnel for myself to get in there and see what's up with that. Yeah, while well, he's doing that, I'm gonna like give the third degree to this guy, and I pull out my badge. I'm going to give the first and second degree. Which is which is part of like my documentation. Like, you see this? I work for the Circle of Nine. Now tell me what happened. What did they do to you? All right, first we're going to go to Montgomery. Um, so going up to this little girl as you get under there and everything, like, um, she seems very quiet, but coming up to you, like, you do hear that she is quietly weeping. They took her. He took her. He took mother. Hey, little girl. Don't worry. What's your name? She's just quietly weeping, staring blankly at the wall. It's repeating like they, they took her. They took he took mother. He took he took mother again. It's like, uh guys, this one's doing way worse than the other guy. Is she broken? Uh very mentally, not physically. She looks okay. So back to gloaming, he's just like this eye this eye appeared on his on his forehead and he, he stared and like I felt the worst pain in my head and just thoughts and words and it all none of it made sense and it all just hurt so just talks about how Blackthorn just essentially this third eye that you've seen around stared into him and it just caused this immense pain and anguish in him to the point where like he essentially tortured a tortured soul and he's just i can't do it again i can't do it again he's like he's gonna try and break your grapple okay he's gotta be to 16. nope you know I, I still got him pinned to the ground hey hey and i i smack him across the face hey you've been through some shit. i get that but you gotta man up now you're the blacksmith damn it and i need you to make sure that that little girl gets out of here safely whatever i need to do to get out of here please as he's saying that I'm trying to like try to pick her up a little bit and like kind of you know Get her over to the hole. <laughs> See if she does anything. Um, she, she doesn't budge herself, but you can you can pick her up. 
I mutter under my breath. I thought we weren't saying the B word anymore. What? <laughs> oh, no, he's a black guy. That, that, that's fine. He said the word. Black. <laughs> it's a job. Like silversmith or goldsmith. So you bring the little girl to him. He carries her and he bolts. He's out of there. And I'm assuming we have like another place to go after this. Is like another door or something. You do see at the end of the this small hallway, at the end of the cells, there is another door. I'm going to get to the door, and uh, before I All open right, I'm going to try to cast Blur on myself again. I'm going to do the same for Invisibility. Uh, that's a 15, so that does succeed. Uh, I failed. I got, I got an 11. So Gloomy becomes a Blur again. Montgomery, roll me a D4 and a D6. Oh, I only missed by one. All right, so watch me get like a 10. That's a 7. So you go to cast the spell, and it just dissipates. All right. You're probably going to need like another minute or so to, before you can cast another spell. All right, good. So my spell will last by the time yours, <laughs> yours is able to pick up again. So you're my stopwatch now. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just going through the door. And so as you go through the door, again, it is a fairly well-lit room. There are porches on the walls. It's not a huge room. You guys are entering from the west. On the south side, there is like this mural of two eyes. And in the middle, it reads... One eye sees all, one eye knows all. All right, that's the eye we got to take out. <laughs> Any thoughts, guys? Well, it's the one that knows all, it technically sees all anyway, too. Well, it can know it and not see it. Uh, so wait, is it just the mural? Is that all that's in here? It's just the mural and lit walls. Is it one eye hears all? That's what I'm saying. You don't technically yeah, yeah, no, see one know eye it, hears all. so... Yeah, you got to But then it's, it's like... Yeah, I know, it's missing the third <laughs> You never heard the all-hearing eye? Oh, well, that's a new cult I'm going to have to add. Cult of the all hearing eye, <laughs> the all smelling ear. No, no, that's that's the counter cult. Any thoughts, guys? Uh, no thoughts, head empty. <laughs> Verdict, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, so what are these again? They're just like statues with eyes, yeah, because it's just a mural, right? Not even necessarily a mural, it's sticking out a little bit and it's like carved into like this stone. The stone seems different than like a 10 by 10 stone on what is like a uh, 10 by 20. So it's like sticking outside of the wall. The wall itself is like uh, maybe 20 feet wide. And then the center of it is this stone sticking out. And it's carved into this different colored stone. And it says between the two eyes, one eye sees all, one eye knows all. Yeah, like, like I cast Mage Hand and, and I'm like have it poke the eyes. See if anything happens. I'll poke the left eye first. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. All right. Then the right eye. Nothing. Yeah. I'm out of ideas. I'm going to ask the eye that knows all a question. What is two plus two? Silence. That is not the answer. Yo, no shit. <laughs> uh, are there any other defining features other than the uh, pedestal, stone, and the eyes? No, it's a f clear. It's a pretty uh, blank room. Oh, okay. Um, you do notice now, though, that the eyes themselves are starting to come closer together. And the words, the one eye sees all, one eye knows all, is slowly fading. I say, uh, one eye, uh, here's all. It's speeding up now. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the eyes are starting to get closer and closer. The words are starting to dissipate, and the eyes are almost touching now. I'm going to get out of the room. <laughs> mm. so you go for the door, but the door has dissipated. There's no door there now. Oh, ah, shit. You see, like, the eyes are almost one now. It just, I start doing math. Counting on my fingers, one, two, like trying to do all this like math, I'm like knows all, carry the four, one eye sees all, one eye knows all. Aren't they the same eye? Yeah, but they're becoming one, so now they know and see everything. And see all things, yeah. It's the all-seeing eye, therefore it's, it knows everything too. So as the eyes become one, you watch as like the features begin to like intrude off of the stone. And you watch as from out of the stone, a large humanoid figure with one eye steps forth. I need you guys to roll initiative. Uh, is my blur still going? No, it's been two minutes. Oh, right. Yeah, it's been about two Damn. minutes. All right, well, I still got my mage armor and my initiative of 24. I got a six. <laughs> oh, shit. Nine. <laughs> Again. Guys, we are rolling D5s. Uh, I know. I rolled well. You, you're, you're doing great. So top of the round is going to be gloaming. I'm going to cast magic missile at second level. All right, roll me a spell check. Oh, that's uh, that's an eight. All right, roll me a d4 and a d6. That's a two. 
All right, so that's a second level spell. I roll me 2d6, you take 2d6 force damage. 2d6 force damage? Uh, that's going to be seven damage. So you guys watch as Gloaming tries to fire off these, what looks like these magical darts, and it just implodes in his hand. Uh, I, I, do we have any, do we have any healing? <laughs> Which is more damage than you do with the magic missile. So that's seven points of damage? Uh, yeah, and I'm going to try and walk as far away from this thing as I can. All right, you're like in the corner of the room. All right. All right, up next, it's this thing. So this thing, are you guys, were you guys just standing like in the center of the room or were you by the doorway? I tried to go to the door. Kurdik, were you like just standing in the middle like counting? Yeah, I was like not really paying attention. I'm like trying to just solve this puzzle. All right, so he's going to make a beeline to you and he's going to lift his fist up and he is going to strike down at you. There's going to be an 18 to hit. That hits. And that is going to be eight points of bludgeoning damage. Yikes. As he reels back, he watches his eye starts to glow, and that'll be his turn. All right, that's your turn, Corey. I don't like getting punched. <laughs> You're a monk. Yeah, he's supposed to do the punching. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna punch back. I am going to do. I'm gonna hit him with my whip. All right, make an attack. Make yeah, a... watch him whip. <laughs> this is Cray Cray. Whip it good. So my whip attack. So that's a ten. A ten does not hit. It just like grazes off the stone hide of this beast. I'm going to do flurry blows so I can do two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. All right, do it up. First one uh, is an 18 plus 5. All right, that hits. And a 13 plus 5. That hits. So it's uh, 11 damage between the two attacks, between the two unarmed strikes. All right, so after your whip failed to do anything, you go in and you're going for its legs and you're doing a nice side kick and you do it twice. And you see like a little bit of a chip. Okay, that's all I got. Alrighty, Mount Gumry. All right, I'm gonna Eldritch Blast that thing right in the face for the eye. Uh, does a 14 hit? A 14 does not hit. On my bonus action, I'm going to uh, Healing Light. I'm gonna heal Corey actually, since he's tanking. Corey, you heal four points of damage. Nice. All right, Kedrick, what are you up to right now for health? Uh, plus the four, 17. That's what I gotta do to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mount Gummer, are you doing anything else? I'm I'm gonna just, like try to flank it, but like you know, like around the wall, so I'm like, it's not looking directly at me or something like that. I'm not sure like what direction it's actually looking, so I'm trying to just get get like get to a blind spot or something. You do see like as you're going to flank it, um, you can definitely do that. It's not a very big room, um, but as you go to try and do that, its eye is following you. <laughs> so I just freeze. I'm like, oh shit. Nothing's <laughs> happening. Hi. As you're walking, it is following you. Like, uh, I'm just going to freeze. It's like, if I don't move, maybe it doesn't take me. <laughs> all right, so you don't move at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, I, I see it. I'm moving. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe motion. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you want to do then? No, I, I, I've gone through all my actions and stuff. All right. That's top of the round. Uh, gloaming. From my corner, Ray of Frost. All right. Making a, is that an attack roll or a save? Attack roll. So that's going to be 22 to hit. All right. That hits. Roll for damage. Oh, that's a one. One damage? That is one damage, <laughs> and his speed is reduced by ten. Oh, it's not too concerned with speed, and he's not concerned about that damage. It looks like, you know, he just, like, frosted his tips. That is unfortunate. <laughs> if he had hair, he'd be a pretty cool guy. <laughs> I guess I'll attempt to Shadow Blade, and hopefully I don't kill myself with damage. All right, that's a second level spell? Yep. All right. That is a 22, so I at least do get my Shadow Blade. Do you have your Shadow Blade? Ah, uh, that's going to be my turn. That is going to be his turn. Um, and you watch Montgomery as this beam comes out forth from his eyes and go attacks you. I'm going to need a dexterity save from you. That is a 18. So you quickly dodge out of the way of this beam. Now its focus is again back on Kedrick. That'll be its turn. Right, so that'll bring us to Kurdrick. Kurdrick is just going to open palm punch this thing. He's going to like maneuver around it. He's going to like punch it and circle it at the same time. All right, you can do that. Open palm punch, 15 to hit. 15 just misses. Yikes. Yeah, I'm going to do flare of blows again, so that's two more. All right, roll them up. 17 plus 5. It hits. Uh, and 17 plus 5. Both hit. Roll for damage. Also, if you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action, which I did, it doesn't require that I hit. Only that I'm holding my Kensai weapon, which is both my whip and my rifle. You gain a plus 2 bonus to AC until the start of your next turn while the weapon is in your hand and you aren't incapacitated. 
So I just get plus two to my AC until my next turn. So it's going to be 10 damage. All righty. You go for a straight punch on the same parts you were kicking. You realize, nope, nope, didn't get anything of that. You circle around and you go for another sidekick. You feel another chip and then you go in for another elbow to the opposite end. You're slowly working around this large leg, trying to just chip away at it. Yep, I just keep punching, 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 trying to like chip away at this guy. Like Fist of the North Star. <laughs> All right. So that'll bring us to Montgomery. All right. Let's see if I explode myself. <laughs> Magic is fun. I'm going to cast a flaming sphere like 10 feet in the opposite direction of Quarry right. behind the thing. And let's roll to see if I die. You haven't taken any damage, have you? I'm, a, I'm at full health. All right, so you should be fine. So what, what'd you roll? God damn it. It's an 11. You go in to try and cast this spell. You get like a little spark in the area you're trying to get it, and that's it. Uh, my bonus action, I'm actually going to heal Gloomy. Thank you. And you healed six damage. And that brings you to 19, Gloomy? Uh, that does bring me to 19, yes. I need it. <laughs> I got one more heal charge left. So that'll bring us to top of the round. Gloaming. All right, yeah, no, I'm going in. Um, Kedrick is uh, next to him, right? Kedrick, in like circling around, he is actually probably behind him. So like he, you could actually easily flank, no problem. Yeah, I'm going to flank and use my Shadow Blade to make an attack with advantage. All right, roll it up. Uh, that's a 13 to hit. 13 does not hit. Yep, that's my turn. So, like, with the failure of your magic the last time, it's left your hand a little bit damaged, so, like, going in, you lose it for a split second, and the blade just vanishes as you go for the strike and you miss. But you are able to maintain the magic that it reappears. It is now going to be the Construct's turn. Um, the Construct, the same leg that Kendrick has been working on, he's going to lift that leg and kind of do, like, a mule kick, and then he's going to ready a hammer fist to come down on gloaming um so he'll make an attack on kendrick that is not going to hit that is going to be an 11. yeah buddy so critic he goes to kick you but you're easily like circling around him and you just dodge out of the way perfect right, and that'll bring us to kendrick i do the same thing i did the last time uh you do have advantage with the flanking i'm just gonna do the same thing so pow, pow, pow. punch 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 just keep punching just keep punching <laughs> so my first on arm flank it will be a 13 plus 5. Right, that hits. I'll do a flurry of blows. So that's a 15. 15 just misses. And another 15. A 15 just misses. Damn. Uh, even with advantage, huh? Oh, wait. I did. Uh, sorry. I had advantage on all of those. Yep. The two 15s count as a failure, and I'll roll because they were consecutive. You know, do you want to do that? Yep, sure. So first one hit, second one miss. Go for your third. And I have advantage, right? Yep. Okay, so that's a, a miss on that, but let me add, yeah, it's a miss. Now, yeah, well, at least we tried. Right. Yeah. As he comes in to kick you, you get one solid punch in, and you go to, like, finish up the combination, but he moves his leg back in place, and it just whiff it. What's the damage you got on that? That's seven damage. It's a pretty good one punch. Yeah. I'm punching his feet, so I imagine that maybe I, like, punch one of his toes, like, clean off. Like, it's, like, a, such a direct hit. <laughs> his leg is looking pretty rough, like, very uh, And I have plus two to my AC again, because I did the on-arm All right, and so that'll bring us to Montgomery. Can I cast Flaming Spear above it? I don't know. What's it say for Flaming Spear? Five-foot diameter sphere of fire appears in an unoccupied space of your choice within range and lasts for the duration. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere makes a dexterity saver to fail as two to six fire or a uh, half. As a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. If you ram the sphere into a creature, that creature must take make a saving throw against the sphere's damage, and the sphere stops moving this turn. Um, so can I do that? I'm going to say that you probably can't, uh, only because it says you can direct it over barriers up to five feet. But that, that's only when you're moving it. Yeah, but I'm assuming that you can't if, you can, if you can make it levitate, if you can make it fly, it wouldn't have that. I'm assuming it stays, it floats above the ground. Yeah. I would say because it's a large creature, I kind of picture like one leg in a five foot space, another leg in a five foot space, and Bumming and Kendrick is probably like on his right side. So if you wanted to put it on his left side, you could do that. Yeah. Okay. So if you're going to cast that, give me a spell check. Over higher. Come on. I just need a fucking seven. A seven. 14. I got a 19. There, there we go. go. So I'm putting it behind it, and, and then I'm just going to bump it bump into it that, that side. It. So it needs to make a dex save. I rolled a one. Yeah. I think they're going our way. 
Awesome. That's not a 13. So that's going to be 2d6 fire damage. That's 7 fire damage. All right. He is hurting. Yeah, no, that's the end of my turn. So that brings us to the top of the round, Gloaming. So just uh, with advantage, I'm going to attack it with my Shadow Blade. You count. No, that's a 9 and an 8. <laughs> yeah, no dice. That's okay. Gerdrick is going to take it down. <laughs> you got this, Gerdrick. You keep going through these strikes, but like, you know, like he had looked at his leg and he just like catches balance from the heat hitting him. He shuffled his leg again and he went to strike and missed it. Right, but now it's his turn and the fist that he was writing it is coming straight down on you, Gloaming. Bring it. That is going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, 15 would just hit, but I'm going to use my arcane deflection as a reaction to gain two to my AC. It comes down, and you just briefly deflect it enough that it crashes against the li- right next to you. It goes to lift up, and you can see the eye beam charging again. And that'll be his turn. And that's the end of his turn, so he needs to make a deck save. Nope, that's going to be a six. He takes ten fire damage. As he comes down to strike you and you deflect it, it knocks him off balance enough with the heat pressing up against him. His leg completely crumbles and he tumbles down and falls and the whole thing shatters. Yeah, I finally get something off. Damn. As this happens, you notice the slab that he came out of shatters as well, leading to a staircase. I punch him again. <laughs> All right. Well, down the staircase.